Welcome back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another European show. We've got the preview of Shamrock Rovers and Scuppy, and we have the sorry, the review even of Shamrock Rovers and Scuppy, and we have the preview of the Pats and Sligo games on Thursday. We'll start off with tonight's game, and it obviously finished Scuppy one, Shamrock Rovers two. Shamrock Rovers go through five two, and aggregate, um, obviously win the first leg three one, win the game tonight two 0 They were comfortably two 0 up through Gaffney and Maku, and Scuppy scored in injury time to make it 2-1. I was just saying to you guys there in the WhatsApp group before we came in, that's actually the seventh win a League of Ireland club has had in an individual match in Europe this year. That's not to be scoffed at, in my opinion. That's, that's very strong, and we could have more wins as well. So seven individual wins, I think it's fantastic. Rovers, absolutely delighted with this. They'll go through to the next round of the Europa League, where they will take on Fern Varus of Hungary. Um we were beaten tonight by Karabag, which was expected, I think, over the two legs. And the Rovers go on to take on the Hungarians. So, uh, yeah, brilliant. So, I saw off with Luke. Keith seen the game. We didn't see the game, actually. But I'll start off with Luke and just uh, look, it's a brilliant result for Rovers to get through. And it's fantastic for Irish football again, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's another, you know, good news story for the league, I think, in Europe with the teams in Europe. Like, you know, I think it's it's they were going into this one, they would have been very pleased with their first leg, obviously, because. You know, it was such a good win at home. And, you know, when you're playing at home in Europe and especially in Tala, like there's not many teams like it's going to go there and do well. Like so to start the way they did in the first leg and we tune it up early and not early on. And then, you know, obviously then to get that third goal sort of killed it then, you know what I mean? Um, I think it killed the tie as well, to be quite honest. So obviously Scubby caused them a lot of problems in the second half of the first leg. But, you know. From what I've heard, Shamrock Rovers played very well. And, you know, I heard Scubbies did have a few chances as well. But, you know, Rovers took the two the two chances that they needed to take. And uh, it's the difference. So, you know, fair play to them. It's, it's just an unbelievable achievement. You know, they've finally, I'd say, reached a uh, yeah. Euro- a European sort of um, group stages, whether it's going to be the Europa League, which is a serious possibility. Let's not write them off. You know what I mean? I think they, they are. There is that, that possibility that they could be in the Europa League playoff, uh, Europa League group stages, but they are guaranteed to be in the Conference League, which is which is brilliant because I think the whole bringing the Conference League in really helps the the Irish clubs and that you know it gives them a real chance of getting into getting into a group stage because obviously you know we, we're obviously going to speak about Pats, but um and that's so it, like if Pat, if Pats can win now on the Thursday as well, I know we'll talk about that game, but. Then they've got a, a chance as well. So like it, it's a, uh, it really opens it up that we could m- maybe possibly have, you know, more than one League of Ireland club in a in a European group stage just this year, which is is excellent. Yeah, Keith, the performance tonight and the the actual game result, I suppose, was it deserved on the night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so, Keith. Um, I mean, uh, Rob was back three were absolutely excellent. Uh, Sean Hoare, Lee Grace, and uh, Dan Cleary. I think I think Dan Cleary was a shrewd signing. With, with, particularly with Pico Lopez getting the injury, um, it, it was good for it was good for Bradley to bring him in. Particularly with the experience he has with Dundalk and stuff. But you know, looking at the stats, group, he had twenty attempts at goal, but only four or five of them were on target, so he didn't really threaten. Um, didn't really threaten as as the attempts w- would suggest, but like Luke said, the third goal in Tala seemed to be crucial, didn't it? It just it just gave that that little bit of extra protection for for Albert, but nil all a half time, and then the first goal was obviously lucky. Um, Gaffney, but if you don't if you don't buy a lot of ticket, you don't you know you haven't got a chance of of, of winning the draw. So he took a shot, took a massive deflection over their keeper. He was a couple of guys out. And the second goal, the keeper was at fault again. Like I mean, the Maku went for the ball. Whatever the keeper was doing, I don't know. But he seemed to want to avoid the Maku rather than at Nelson uh, put the ball in the net two 0 Well, well discussed. And Manus, you could see, was visibly um, upset with the goal they conceded. Cavan was a bit like the ball just just outside the box, and yeah. you know you don't want to be you don't want to be conceding goals. You know, particularly that at that level. And another thing, Keith, there's a couple of yellow cards that Rovers picked up tonight that may hit them down the line as well. So, you know, stupid stuff that they don't need to be doing when they're tuning it up, you know? Yeah, yeah I think uh, you see that. Yeah, Watts, Cleary, Hoare and Finn picked up one. So four yellow cards for them tonight. But uh, like they know McCann tonight. And I was a little bit concerned about that, you know, because he was very controlling in the first leg until he went off. But uh, obviously Richie Tell came in. And they were actually able to rest players as such. Tonight, like you know, this is got me off at 20 minutes ago. You don't see Irish players saying that in Europe. We were able to rest players, you know, that kind of way. Burke came on, didn't he? Set up the goal as such. Uh, Matthew came on, obviously made an impact. And uh, 
it was interesting to see Jack Byrne back in the bench because you're thinking to yourself, if they can get him fit, he'll add another strength to their bow as well there, Luke. Yeah, it's what they're missing as well. I think, you know, we've been mentioning um, over the last few weeks, I think they are sort of missing that sort of player who's going to play that serious killer ball. Obviously, you know, they're still doing really well without him, but yeah. like, they are kind of missing that, you know what I mean? And I think he actually has the most assists in the league as well, Keith. Um, Jack Byrne, like, you know what I mean? So, and he has missed quite a lot of games. Like, so he yeah, is going to bring, yeah, it is mad. Like, he's going to bring back a, for them like a lot of obviously experience and, and you know quality like so that's the most important thing quality and that and I think they have missed them um, to be honest like I, th- I do think they have because um, like I remember watching them that day against Strada they just were missing that sort of player who's going to you know play that killer ball keep you know with it. and, and mm. I think that's that was what they were missing but you know to have him back now amongst the uh, being able to select them and that will be uh, key for them especially like in the when they've got like league cup you know, moving in now to the conference league group stages or Europa League group stages, the games coming up. So, uh, you know, that, that that plays a, a factor as well, you know. Yeah, fair play to Shamrock Rovers. And I wouldn't even rule them out this the game against Fair and Bar. So that's going to be interesting two legs when that comes. But uh, fair play to them. And as he's kind of alluded to as well, um, it was one of the things that Bradley really wanted to prove himself in Europe. And I think he's done that because at the worst, they get to the conference league now, which is fantastic, yeah. Keith, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I think they need to realise that obviously Bernian, um, when they started off against Hibs, you know, yeah. and then they took the next step to Ludogorsk and they lost. They mm. went down a level again then playing Scoopy and now they're mm. jumping up a level again against Farron Carvas, which, yeah. look, they, they qualify for, for a couple of group stages. Look, a lot of people are saying, oh, we have group stages, you have group stages guaranteed, but go out and try. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, the toy is there to be won. It's it's a level playing field. Um, it's nil all, obviously, at, uh, as we speak. So go out, and I know the first leg is away, which may help Rovers as well. The only thing with Rovers tonight was their first away win in Europe this season. You know, so uh, it'd be a tough place to go, hungry, but uh, they have every chance, particularly with the squad they have. Yeah, absolutely. As well as on Thursday, uh, Sligo Rovers obviously take on Viking at home with the showgrounds as a sellout, but. A lot of people wouldn't expect this to finish 5-1 in the first leg. Unfortunately, it did. Look, it's going to be a very, very difficult second leg for uh, Luke, for Sligo. And BHC just see watch how they approach it and what way they do approach it. Because uh, like they often play Keane up front, obviously, and you might have Fitzgerald out wide. And um, what's the other guy's name? I've forgotten that. <laughs> Fitzgerald and Carol Sullivan, sorry, out wide. That's all but, yeah. but one thing I've noticed with them, Mata doesn't normally start a lot of the games and you're just wondering like they're 5-1 down you're thinking they have to go for it but at the same he time does. like they get another hammer and I don't know do you play Mata up front with, with Keane basically they're the two top scorers Mata's six goals Keane obviously has 11 uh, these are league goals by the way as well so Mata obviously scored a goal against them um, against Motherwell and Keane scored in Europe as well so you kind of just say to yourself look let's play Mata even off Keane or like, how do they approach this game, Luke? It's very, it's very difficult. Yeah, it is difficult, but I think they've just got to go for it. To be honest with you, like, you have nothing to lose. You know what I mean? You're already five one down. Like, if you just go for it, like, and then see what happens. You know what I mean? But be going in with that sort of, you know, like we're not gonna, you know, like obviously they're not gonna sit back, obviously because they've got to go for it. You know what I mean? They need goals, like, do you know what I mean? So. I think they've got to go for it. Um, there's no other way of putting it. I think they've just got to go for this game and, and see where it takes them. But I, I, oh, it's 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 a tough one to analyse because I, I think oh, the tie, like I think the tie is over unless there's some you know mad comeback. But I just can't see it happening. But like it's uh, you know I think the tie is over. But like look, fair play to Sligo for forgetting as far as they did. You know what I mean? And that. Um, but they I think they've got to just go for it in this game and, and see where it takes them. And look, football is football. You know what I mean? You just never know what's around the corner, but um, we'll see. But I don't. I can only see it going one way again. Mm, Keith, is it just a case from Sligo? Let's try and win the football match, basically. If they can, great. But... Yeah. My my fear for Sligo is if they do go for it, you yeah. know, we can will just open them up. You know, yeah. the first leg, you know. So you you don't want the hammering, but you you also don't want to sit back and and, and people don't say, oh well. No, yeah, absolutely. Go through the motions, you know. It's it's like we mentioned in the first division show about teams drifting. This is this is a tie that's that's over, and it's like Sligo will just drift through the second leg. 
obviously the showground is going to be packed out and it's a pity it did finish 5-1 because the great results against Motherwell obviously um, but you know even if it was 3-1 or something there's a little hope there isn't there yeah I spoke about I spoke about the step up for Sean Grover it's like Motherwell and Viking Viking are a step up for Motherwell as well so um, it's a tough one you don't want to be hammered but you also don't want to be seeing that you're uh, you're sitting back and you're not going for the game so It'd be interesting lineup. I'd I'd agree with you, Keith. I'd go with Mata off Keane. Um, yeah. But Why if it's not, not if it's not working out, I'd shut up shop then just to prevent a bit of a hiding. Um, if it if it turned out like that. Mm. How are you going to call us? Obviously, we all feel like you are going to go through. Or so are you going to get a result in the match, Keith? You think? I don't, unfortunately, I don't think so. The, I think Viking are uh, fine. So I um, we said it before the first leg that um, mm. Sligo will find a tough and. I think it'd be two or three nil. I think even though Viking don't need to go out and and do anything really as such, um, that's the hope as well a little bit, isn't it? That they do go out with that kind of mentality, like you know, that might dampen the result a bit. Hopefully, as, as Luke said, football is football. You just don't know. But I mean, um, Sligo are at the level, you know, like we we all we all said when they when they struggled against Ballatown, um, that like they should have been hammering those teams. Whereas Viking probably are thinking, oh well, we should be hammering, we should be hammering Sligo two legs, um. So, uh, yeah, I think two or three nil. Unfortunately for Sligo, what do you think, Luke? Yeah, I think it's going to be comfortable enough for a night for Viking again. I reckon you know, just you just can't really see by the way the way Viking played in the first leg was excellent. So like, I think they're 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 a very good side. Like, mm, I agree, but just for the sake of it, I'll say Sligo are going to win the match just to bring some balance to it. But uh, Viking are obviously going to get through. Uh, St. Patrick's will let it click on CSK Sophia at Palace Stadium. Uh, and obviously, there's a lot to play for this game, lads. Uh, I think that's one of the things, though. I'll get to you, Luke, first. Um, obviously, yeah. it's disappointing in a sense that's in Palace Stadium. We understand why. But, like, you do feel like Pascal's got them at Richmond Park, you know what I mean? A full Richmond yeah. Park, etc. You know, we can't play at Richmond Park. We get that. But funnily enough, Pats's, um performances and results in Europe at Palace Stadium make for grim reading like they've had some like 3-1 home defeat when I say home defeat Tallis Stadium a 5-0 defeat for example they've lost their last three games in Europe in Tallis Stadium so that's a bit of a concern but I did see a few people saying yeah Tallis is a bigger pitch and stuff then again Sophia's pitch is quite big as well but yeah, it just exactly, takes exactly. away a little bit from the home tie for Pats doesn't it do you think that could play into effect in this game? Oh, I like it I don't know do you know what I mean this is mm. the toughest one to call obviously Um you know, this is a very difficult one. I don't know. I think I actually think Sophia underestimated Pats in that first leg. Um, I think that was Sophia's problem. You know, I think I think they did underestimate Pats, and they sort of, you know, were went into the game thinking, "Ah, should look at you know, we're gonna we're gonna win this game comfortably." But they didn't, and they were beaten like and deservedly beaten like and and you know, Pats were well deserved of the win. I don't know about this one, Keith. To be honest with you. I am not worried for Pats, but, you know, I think they've got to be careful. You know what I mean? They've really got to be careful. Look, they've got to just go for it. And, you know, obviously, they, look, they'll sit back early on for 15, 20 minutes, but they need. I think Pats will need a goal, to be honest. I think they will need a goal because there's no... I think Sophia will score in this game. Um, and I think Sophia are going to put in a far better performance than they did in that first leg. And I don't think that... I think they'll have realised that Pats are a good side. Do you know what I mean? And, and this, me, I'm not criticising Pats here. I'm more giving Pats credit because it's my, me saying that Sophia shouldn't have underestimated them because I think they did. Um, so, you know, we, we obviously thought Sophia was going to be a, a tough game for Pats and, you know, it didn't really happen. But at the same time, um, it's going to be a lot difficult. I think this one is going to be a tougher tie for them um, in the second leg for some reason. I don't know why, but... Um, I, I think it's a very tough one to call. Um, but it's a big night for Pats, you know, and, and I hope they do it, you know. Um, for them, like I hope they really do it because it's it, um they're doing everything, you know what I mean, and they they, they deserve to of that first leg win, and they've been really good in Europe, so I think they deserve to go through here. But um, and I hope they do, but it's gonna be a tough tie, Keith. Yeah, Keith. I mean, I think the first goal is gonna be crucial because I don't think this is gonna be nil nil, in my opinion. No. No, um, I think it's going all the way. To be honest with you, Keith, so I think it's penalties. I think I think Sophia are going to win this tie two one, and it's whoever holds her nerve on penalties. Um, obviously, Pats have won on penalties in Europe this season. 
Um, I promise I wouldn't mention the war, but like Pats have had a week off. They haven't had a game in between um, this second leg. So um, obviously their game called off on Sunday. Mm. So I think that, that, Sophia that, haven't either, Keith, just to throw that in there. They haven't had a game either, incidentally, which is interesting. True enough, but, but obviously yeah. Pats were scheduled to play a game. So mm. that extra little bit of rest will have helped them. Um, I think I think Luke's right. I think the, Sophia did underestimate them a little bit. Um, in the first leg, and Pat's where does everyone winners um, mm. over there? And you know, the, the interesting thing, Keith, I think, was that Sophia, even if we play on that for a minute, that they underestimated Pat, they never at any, any point in the game really got going. And I think Mora definitely underestimated Pat at Richmond, but they never like they played better in the second leg, Mora, but not enough to get through. Do you know what I mean? I just wonder sometimes. Like Sophia could have got into a bit of a rush here as well, like you know, that kind of way that they can't get out of. That's a possibility, I think, as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it'd be interesting to see how Tim Clancy sets Pats up. Um, obviously going away in Europe, you set up a different way to our home. And I know it's not a home game as such for Pats, and they haven't got a good record in Tala, but uh, you know, they'll have the crowd behind the six thousand tickets sold, I believe. So yeah. And they have to come behind them, and whoever whoever uh, kind of tags along from different League of Ireland teams to support bats, uh, it'll only help. But uh, it's I think this going to extra time. I definitely I definitely think um, Sophia win the game um, because they they'll have more knowledge of how Pats play and stuff. And uh, I think yeah, I think Pats will win the tie on penalties. Uh, that's my prediction. Interesting, Luke. I mean, yeah. I mean, Keith mentions there how Tim Clancy is set up, and that can. Depend how Sophia set up because, like, will Sophia play a hard press on Pats? Like, you know, that kind of way, will they let Pats have the ball? Will Pats of them have the ball? So it's all this yeah. kind of little, you know, it's all these little things that come into it. But I just, I was listening to Clancy there after, it was actually after the, the first leg match, and I just got this little sense that, you know, Pats might play in the counter attack in this one. And, um, you know, they'll hope to keep it tight. For the first 20 minutes and make sure they don't concede and hope that little bit of desperation, even at yeah, that point, of come into Sophia's game and then chances open up. So I sense Pats will maybe sit more than even people might expect. Yeah, to be honest with you, I'm seriously looking forward to this game now, actually. Like, you know, you're talking about here, and I'm, I'm really interested to see what way Tim is going to yeah. set the lads up and, and, and see what way they're, they're going to play. Like, it is really an interesting tie, like, and, and you know, I think even people from outside the league, this is one to watch. Like, honestly, like this is a bit, this is a big, big game for Pats. Like, this is probably one of the biggest games in, in the last few years for St. Pats. Obviously, like we mentioned, you could talk about the cup final and all, you know what I mean, and that. But I'm just saying, like, I think really, I really think this is one of Pats' biggest games um, in a long, long time. Like, this is a huge game. Um, you know, if they got to the playoffs of the Conference League, like, that'd be a, a serious achievement for them. Like, do you know what I mean? And I don't, I wouldn't, I wasn't expecting them to even get this far, to be honest with you. And I don't know about you, but. I don't. I wasn't expecting them to be where they are, but and to be going into a second leg, you know, to get into the playoffs, one nil up. So, you know, you just hope they see it out, and you know, they be they they be be very disciplined. I think they've got to be disciplined, and you know, if not get someone sent off early, and, you know, if they get someone sent off early or something, something stupid, and and you just wouldn't want that, like, and, and sort of ruin the game for them. So I hope they can just be disciplined and you know hold their shape for the first 10, 15, 20 minutes, and and then. And then see what they can do and, and you know create a few chances and, and you never know then. But yeah, really, really looking forward to this game. And uh I do I actually I fancy Pats to see to see it through. I'm just hoping anyways. Well Keith said penalties, didn't he? Um I'll say I'll say one all and I think they might go behind and they'll get neutralized and just have try. Yeah, I think hard. normal time as well. I'm gonna go normal time as well. I, I think if they get through, like they won't make it easy. When I say easy, they probably won't go one up even like you know that kind of way. No. They'll get through no. and they'll be just when Skinner or T. But that'll be enough and people will be delighted with that, you know. I think I think what Pats need to do is they need to assess the situation um yeah. up to the 20, yeah. 25 mark, see where the game's going, you know. Yeah. If Sophia if Sophia if they if Sophia are on top, obviously they have to change their tactics or whatever. Do that, you know, change your tactics as the game evolves mm. and um, mm. match them up. You know, don't mm. be afraid to match them up. I mean, you've already gone over there and beaten them. So obviously, obviously you can, you know, you, you, you can get a result against them. So um, yeah, I think, I think Clancy has to be, has to be Q here and uh, he just has to assess the situation in around 15, 20 minutes, see how the game's going. Yeah, I mean, they could manage the game by even letting Sophia have the ball. It's such a lot of people, you know, in those kind of games get frustrated to say, 
So if you have the ball, just hypothetically, let's say they have it for 30 minutes. Yeah, yeah, they will. And you're going. But if that's the case, we could be wrong there, but that could be part of Pat's game plan to do that. Like, you know what I mean? And if they're not creating chances, Sophia, that is, the longer the game goes on, they will get a little bit antsy. And you can see in the first leg, there's all these opportunities for Pat to hit them there because he can't create against them. So, look, it's going to be an interesting tie. And um, it's obviously the most interesting of the night, let's be fair, uh, between the two ties. And, uh, look, if Seigel came back, it'd be the most remarkable thing we've ever seen in Irish football. I'm telling you that. Um, and if Pats could get through, obviously it'd be fantastic. It'd be brilliant as well. So, uh, look, guys, thanks for coming on. We'll leave it there. Let us know, guys, what you think in the comments. Uh, what you thought of the Rovers game. Give us a prediction for Sly going Pats as well. Subscribe to the channel. Hit your bell notification button. And thanks again for watching. Brilliant. Thank you, boys. Excellent. That was good, good. lads. Enjoyed that.